munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and today I have such an exciting unboxing video for you guys. So currently right now I have five hamsters and yes you heard me right, five. So there is a recent rescue that I did that I will introduce you guys to later. But for now I have five hamsters and only three of them are my own, Sahara, Chunky Chip, and Hannibal. I have noticed with my foster hammy, Miss Rizzle, she loved climbing in her cage and she just will not stop climbing, she wants to be up high, and bin cage is not working out for her. So I decided just for her, and just for her stay, that I would upgrade her to a big cage. Now the cage I ordered was from Amazon, and originally it was $80, but I got it on sale for $60, and I read such good reviews about this product, and I really want to switch to a cage just because there's a lot more accessories out there that are meant for hamsters and climbing hamsters, and they are wired cage accessories. Accessories. Today's video is going to consist of a very large box, so unboxing time! Here we go! So as you can see right here in this big box, this is going to be the cage I get to be unboxing for you guys, as well as this hanging accessory came in the mail. So I ordered one, at least one, wire cage accessory, and this is a climbing one, so hopefully Miss Frizzle likes it. But anyways, this box is as big as me. But you can see just from me being like right here how big the box is. It's pretty big. So this cage is supposed to be around 620 square inches, but some people have measured it as 618. So this is good because my big cages, unfortunately, they're supposed to be around 649, 669 square inches. And I started to notice that because of the round edges that it was kind of lowering the square inches. So seeing how somebody's already measured this and it seems closer to the actual square inch than it is suggesting online, then that is a good deal. So I'm gonna measure it here in a sec too. But as you can see, we have the wire and then we have the base inside. Alright, so it looks like here we got the big base. As you can see, it is pretty deep. I need my measuring tape here in a second. But it looks like it's at least four inches of depth right here, so that's good for bedding. We got the wire, which I'm going to be trying to get these little zip ties off. It looks like we have, what is this? So it looks like this might just be to latch it on the sides. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And then this is going to be the second layer. Yes, this cage is layered. So this is going to sit right up here with its own ramp. So it has even more floor space because you could put stuff underneath here, like right underneath it. And then you have additional space up here. So technically you're adding a lot more to it. There's that. Oh, and I have instructions too. I'm going to be following, don't worry. Oh, and of course Moxie is playing in the box. Moxie. By the way, the cages that you see there, those are going to be for educational purposes only, and those are not housing any animals in them. But I would never recommend those cages. They're only going to be for my videos and the purpose of educating people about them. All right, so it looks like we have three stages of instructions right here, so hopefully this is going to be very simple. To assemble, you will need these pieces. Oh, it looks like I will need some of these. All right, so it looks like I need six of these. These look like it's gonna keep the cage in place. They look like that. Kinda looks like body armor, huh? Like really tiny mouse body armor, you know, stick it right on the front. They go into battle, charge! But yes, I have six of those. I will need that, I will need the pan, and I will need this. So for right now, let's put you aside and let's put you aside, shall we? Yes. All right, next is rotate all four sides down to form the cage rectangle. All right, and then catch the extended hook wires on the front and back panels onto the side panels to close the mesh. All right, so we're closing the mesh.
Next is set the assembled mesh into the base and then catch the clips onto the horizontal wire, all the same vertical height, and clamp them down onto the base until they click. All right, so that's what it looks like right here. So let's do it. So next is the platform and it says right here as viewed from underneath, which it is actually showing underneath with the grid here. Catch the hooks from the ramp into the openings on the platform. Note, there is a nut pre-installed in four slots under the platform. Pre-installed, oh, I see the nuts. <laughs> I'm not nuts, I see the nuts. I don't think you guys can see that, but there's one right there, up here, up here and down here. So they're already installed. So all I probably need to do is just screw in these bolts with the nuts. Yay, screwing, so much fun. And then afterwards it says, turn the ramp platform unit right side up and insert into the cage through the top access door. Check that the platform is level from the outside of the cage, add and tighten the screw to knobs to fix the platform in place. All right, now I'm trying to determine where, oh where does the platform go? I hate doing this at work with platforms because sometimes there's cages that don't even come with boxes. And so we have to set them up and so you have to determine where the platform is gonna go. So now I get to determine where this platform is gonna go and I'm trying to picture it off of a uh, overhead view of it. So I know something's not right here. If I lift it up like this, but it doesn't seem like it is completely straight. Now I measured both sides and the places where I'm supposed to put the bolts in is 10 spaces, you know, counting from the bottom to the top. But for some reason, one side looks like it's slanted than the other side. It doesn't look completely straight. And it's just, it's so bothersome because on this side, it looks completely fine here. If I look at the bolts. They look perfectly spaced out, but then when I look at it, it looks like it's slanted. And I just, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just me. All right, I put everything back in and now I know for a fact I'm not going crazy. So I actually took a look underneath the platform and there's actually a bar there. So I can actually see the distance from that line of bar and how much the platform sits away from it. I can see that uh, this side is definitely a lot smaller than the other side, but they're on the same freaking wire on both sides I am so confused this platform is probably warped and it's bugging me with this you see that I hate that I hate how the bar is so big but yet on this one right here it's completely fine but it is what it is let me show you the other side real quick this one doesn't have the spacing issues like the other side does I just I don't get it I don't get this but anyways the cage is all put together it's finally done
So now all we gotta do is put stuff inside the cage before Miss Frizzle goes in. All right, everything is in now. So all this left is for the new hanging piece that I am super excited to open for you guys today. It's from Rosewood. It's a small animal thing, boredom breaker. See that? That is the hanging activity suspension bridge. So let's see here. It does look like it's a little bit damaged on the side. Yay! It looks like everything's there. Hopefully, ah, it just comes like that. Oh, I love it, look. <laughs> That is so nifty. Oh my gosh. Let's hang it. everybody the cage is done miss frizzle is in her new habitat and look at how big this is like i'll show you this is this is me in comparison with the cage it's pretty huge online it was 620 like i said before somebody measured and said it was more like 618 which is a really good size and then right underneath i'll show you here in a second was her old bin cage that she wanted severely to get out of because she likes to climb now let me show you when i rescued her what cage she came in it's pretty disgusting. She came in this tiny cage. So if I actually, let's see, put it maybe on top and then show you exactly how big that cage is in comparison to her new cage, look at that. Actually, you know what? I could probably just move it over here too. Sorry, Miss Frizzle. I know I'm disturbing you and you're like, what is going on? But let me just show you a comparison right here. Look at that. That is tiny. 
right there and then she has all this space over here but this is what she was being housed in in a 4.5 inch wheel that is pathetic and now as you can see over there she has one of those silent runners that I got online on Amazon or you can go to exoticnutrition.com but she's just loving it she likes her platform right here and then down below let me just quickly show you this was her old bin cage this is a 29 gallon bin cage from Target and unfortunately because of the corners here are rounded as well as the lid is a little bit longer this was not an exact measurement of six I think it was either 649 or 669 or 660 or something like that it was around 660 and uh, it just it looks a lot smaller than this up here let me just move this now that you've seen the horrible cage that she was previously in let me just try to get this to line up here. It looks like there's a bigger difference in size. And she definitely has more room to run around and now that her cage is a lot taller and also has platforms. Well, just one. So after I put her in, her personality unfortunately did change. So it could be one of two reasons that I can think of. One, it's because she is so used to being in a wire cage that that was bad behavior from the previous owners that caused her to just, you know, sniff me. And ow, like you just saw there, she bit me. She doesn't like hands anywhere near wires. She's never bitten me ever. I've had her for almost an entire month and she's never bitten me until this day. She actually earlier today drew blood as I was trying to clean out a few areas in here when I was touching and moving things around while she was in here. And that is so weird, but it could have been just because she used to be in a wire cage and she acts completely different because of her previous owners, which is actually a very negative thing. So if I were to rehome her and she tries to buy somebody who also has a wire cage that's a big no-no that I might have to tell the next owners who have her another thing as you can see right here she's trying to bite the bars she also might not like bars the weird thing is you have kind of like a dilemma of she likes it and she doesn't like it she liked to climb and that's why I was like oh I need to get you something for you to climb in this a little bit higher so you're not so stressed out because she always wanted to climb out of the plastic container now the second reason that I can think of is this is a new environment for her and so you really don't want to be poking or putting your hands in there when she's trying to get used to it but I do believe it's the first thing because as you saw there she did bite me as well as she's just biting the bars and she never used to do that in the bin cage right here except for the lid she definitely wanted to get out and was pushing the lid constantly and trying to chew on it but I just think she might have just been a stressed out hamster from the get-go just because I've seen her behavior I see her trying to get out all the time but at least she has a bigger space in here and hopefully she doesn't start biting me a bunch but this is the second time today that she's bitten me but I'll just let you guys know about the update on her whether or not I am going to keep her in here what are you doing you have a big cage now and you have so many chew toys that you like chewing on why so if you guys like what you see here with this cage and have a Syrian at home yourself I would highly recommend this for just a Syrian I don't know how well a dwarf hamster or Roboroski will do in here but it is big enough for Syrians so they can climb and play around. But this is the Preview Pet Product Cage 528 Universal Small Animal Cage. And you can find this on Amazon. I'll put the links down below. And it is a lot bigger than the KT Super Critter Trail that's about to release here soon. Because this is 620, like I said before. And that one that's trying to come out on market right now is only 540 square inches. And this right here, I definitely do. Why did you fall? <gasps> So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked today's video of the unboxing of Cage and a new accessory to try out, hit like to show your support, comment down below with anything you would like to say and or ask, and subscribe to see more content from me as well as becoming a part of the Munchkin family. So thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!